So today we are discussing product empties, very much a classic old school YouTube thing, one of my favorite things to watch. Um, so I'll get straight into it. I'll start with the Versed Gentle Retinol Body Lotion. So this was just okay. I did finish the tube, um, but I had a lot of issues with it soaping. So if you're not aware of what soaping is, it's basically when you apply like a serum or a moisturizer, it kind of turns white on your skin and it feels like it won't absorb, or at least it takes a long time to absorb. That happened like very obviously and very heavily with this product. So that's basically the main reason I wouldn't repurchase. Um, although I'm happy to see retinol appearing in more body products. I just don't think this one was refined enough to actually, um, or at least for me to use regularly. Next is the Naturium Retinaldehyde Cream Serum 0.05% <laughs> their names are always so long um, but I really enjoyed this one definitely one of my favorite cosmetic retinoids um, throughout 2023 I was testing uh, Lotion P50 by Biologique which is a fairly strong acid so I had to kind of back off tretinoin I had been or have been using tretinoin for a few years so it's hard for me to comment on actual results of cosmetic retinoids just because you know I've been on tret for so long it's probably not fair to assign results from other products. All I can say is that this Naturium one at least sustained the results that I had and it allowed P50 to kind of just work in conjunction with this so that I was able to use a retinoid while testing an acid without destroying my skin barrier. Um, I have moved on now to the 0.1% which I just opened but so far texturally it seems very much the same. Next is the Ordinary Multipeptide Eye Serum. I'm a big fan of this one. It's along the same lines of the Neod Fractionated Eye Contour. I find the Ordinary one actually a little bit more hydrating and the Neod one sadly causes like a stinging or a burning sensation around my eyes so I'm not able to use it. The Neod one probably has a slightly more impressive ingredient list, but this, the ordinary one is still very excellent in that way, especially considering the price difference. The way I mainly use this though is as a layering product. So um, although my skin is fairly oily, my eyes tend to get quite dry. So I enjoyed using this underneath a moisturizer or other eye creams just to give that sort of hydrating effect in the same way I'd use a hydrating serum followed by a face moisturizer. It's a little bit extra to have like a dedicated eye care routine, but the eye area is a concern area of mine. And I say concern loosely, it's just something where I'm noticing sort of lines come up faster than anywhere else, which I think is pretty typical. But I'm currently not interested in injectables or anything like that. So I'm just very much focused on boosting as much as I can with cosmetic products. Um, this is a great one. Very happy to keep using it. I think I've got one or two in backups that The Ordinary kindly sent me. So um, love that one. Highly recommend, especially if you like, like a lighter, thinner kind of eye product texture. Next is the Naturium Multivitamin Body Wash. So this was one of the body washes that I didn't think I would like as much because texturally it's very, like it's the most standard of the offering. I'm just overall very impressed with Naturium's body offering because they have developed so many cool textures that every one of these you try is significantly different from the other. Um, this was a surprise hit though. So although the initial texture is quite common, the way that it lathers, it actually, it's like it envelops your whole body in this very dense, luscious, creamy lather. So I enjoyed using it a lot. The scent is like a subtle green juice scent, very, very mild, so not overpowering. I do probably gravitate towards body care that has an actual like obvious fragrance just because I like that from a sensorial perspective. But Naturium's textures are truly unreal, like especially for the price point. This one was great. Um, I would still say the Glow Getter and the Purifier are my favorites, but I loved using this. Next up is the Touch of the Indigo Cleansing Balm. So this I actually quite enjoyed. When I first opened it, the texture I felt was a little bit simple or standard. So I didn't really understand kind of why it was so hyped, especially on Instagram. The more I used it, the more I appreciated it. It has a really good balance between the kind of waxy and creamy feel. So this doesn't feel too waxy and it rinses quite well. There's a tiny bit of a conditioning skin feel that's left over but probably in a good way. You know, you don't want a cleansing balm to be drying. So sometimes having a little bit of a skin kind of residue is okay, as long as it doesn't feel oily or slimy afterwards, cause I hate that. Um, probably the one thing that would prevent me from repurchasing this one is that it is only a small jar. So it's like 54 grams for the price point that's 
high. Like that's not a lot of product for what they're charging. So yeah, I don't know. I'm undecided. Maybe if this had a little bit of a touch of scent to give it some point of difference in that way as well, I'd be more likely to repurchase it. But I kind of understand being part of the Indigo line, they're targeting more sensitive skin types, all that stuff. So for me personally, maybe not the right fit or not worth it, but I understand why people like it, if that makes sense. Next up is Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. So I was actually doing a kind of versus post of ANR versus Lancôme Genifique. Um, in the end, I did end up preferring the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Serum. It just has a more hydrating, nourishing kick to it. The ingredient profile is more interesting. You know, Estee Lauder and the ingredients they use are a little bit more unique than what Lancôme is offering. Um, Lancôme kind of targets microbiome using like probiotics, prebiotics, that whole thing, which I think is a little bit more common in skincare overall. Whereas Estee Lauder is still looking at kind of... Um, a circadian rhythm kind of thing, which I don't know. I feel like some people probably feel that story and the possibility of these ingredients acting in the skin is maybe a little bit loopy, but this product has been around for decades. So I just feel like historically there's enough anecdotal evidence to say that there's some sort of effect where people do see an improvement in their skin. And at the very least, it's a great antioxidant product that you can use both AM and PM. So where I landed on this though, is that I emptied this bottle and I wanted to see if I'd miss it while I wasn't using it. And the truth is I haven't really missed it. It might be something I'll go back to again if I find maybe a limited edition bottle that I like the look of. But as far as keeping it in my routine regularly, there was nothing or I didn't notice anything overwhelmingly amazing while using this serum. I did end up moving on to their new release. Oh, I can't remember the name. It's like it has, I think, a higher content of the bifida in there. And that serum, or I use it as an essence, has a much more effective anti-redness effect on my skin. So if I were to repurchase or keep using an Estee Lauder product, it would probably be that version of Advanced Night Repair, not specifically the serum. Next up is the Naturium Multipeptide Advanced Serum. So I'm a big, big fan of this one for a lot of reasons. It carries a little bit of sentimental value, but I also feel like it's just a great product. So to give you some context, back in, I think, late 2022, I wrote a bit of a random list of like a wish list of products that I would hope Naturium would bring out. Um, and on that list was a peptide serum because I'm a big fan of their peptide eye cream and the moisturizer. So a serum just seemed like a natural fit. Susan actually DM'd me that day to say that a peptide serum was already in the works. So I'd kind of known about it for about a year before it came out. Then cut to September 2023 and I'm in Los Angeles for Beyonce, which was an amazing show. Like if you haven't watched the Renaissance film, I highly, highly recommend it. Her concert was unreal. But um, Susan happened to be doing the advertising shots for the peptide serum, I think the day before Beyonce. So she handed me what was like a lab sample. So I was able to use it for a little while before it came out. She told me all about the ingredients, like the encapsulated ferulic acid, the copper, the newer peptides, like Azuraline Amplified. It just ticks so many of the boxes that I look for in a skincare serum. But on top of that, they just really nailed the texture. So a lot of Naturium serums have a bit more of a gel form Format, which I love because they work back with layering really well. This is a little bit more milky, so it adds, it's a little bit more nourishing and has a kind of moisturizing effect that the other serums don't have as much. Um, so this one I can use AM or PM. Either way, in the morning, it's especially great because of the boosted antioxidants that will then kind of work back with sunscreen really well. But even if I'm just using it at P in, in the evening, then I've got all those peptides kind of happening in there. So I love this as a skin assurance, skin insurance type serum. It just has so much going for it at a really great price point. Next up is Do Oracle. So I love to use this product underneath the Do Forever eye masks. Not that it's necessary to use it back with the eye masks. It does work really well as a standalone eye cream as well. It just has a little bit more of like a gel hydrating texture rather than a particularly moisturizing effect. 
So I do prefer this to use a few times a week alongside the mask or even just applying a thick layer of it by itself and letting it sit um, like instead of a cucumber or whatever they used to use back in the day. Um, so this is glycerin rich. It's very hydrating and has a really silky smooth texture that just feels really cooling under the skin. And because it's housed in like an aluminium tube, I also like to keep this, this one in the fridge um, during the hotter weather. And that just helps with de-puffing quite a lot as well. So I already have a backup of this straight into another one, but truly a perfect match for the Forever Eye Mask. Now to finish off, I've just got a couple of like toiletry things, which nobody probably cares about, but I finished one of the Clarins shaving cream, shaving foams. Um, I didn't particularly like this. It just felt like every other shaving foam that you find in the supermarket. So there's no reason to buy the Clarins one. I'm definitely not repurchasing this. And lastly, finishing on an odd product is the Natio, 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 don't know how to pronounce it, um, antiperspirant. So definitely my favorite antiperspirant. I go through this like water. Um, I try and pick it up on sale at David Jones. They sometimes do like 20% off on them, but it has just a really subtle, fresh scent, but actually properly helps with like sweat and odor and all the stuff that you don't want to happen during the day. So yeah, that's a weird one to end on, but here we are. So I'm sure I'll have another empties video soon because I have started to make an effort in terms of finishing products properly. Um, and I just like, I love watching empty. So hopefully this wasn't too boring. Please let me know if you've got any questions. I didn't script anything. I don't, I don't know if I answered any questions properly. So yes, please, please do let me know if you have any questions. Um, like, and subscribe, I think I'm supposed to say, and also follow me on Instagram, Sam by the counter, and I will see you next time.